weeks in 2020, a vicious monster took the lives of three people and attacked at least two others who barely survived the ordeal in Oroville and Los Molinos, California. A motive has never been determined for the heinous crime. The killer scouted out his victims as he worked as a tree trimmer. Hey, that sounds familiar. The creature targeted older customers with the youngest of the three he killed being 57, while the others were in their 80s. Once a person or couple had been selected, he returned alone after his crew left and slashed his victim's throats before making his escape without stealing a thing. The killing was what he came for. Ryan Scott Blinston, the Northern California Cutthroat. Ryan Scott Blinston was born on August 26, 1983 in California. There is little information aside from this on his early years, but he entered into the public record at age 22 when he stole a Ford Explorer in Hanover, New Hampshire. He was charged with felony theft. The next time Blinston pops up is in 2013. He had returned home to California and was using methamphetamines, which led him to burglary and additional thefts. Police arrested him in possession of three stolen guns and driving a stolen car. The drugs had pushed him over the edge into crime, but after his release, he was ready to escalate further, this time into violence. But what is strange is that the murders did not seem to be motivated by theft or monetary gain. In the year 2020, Blinston was working as part of a tree trimming crew that serviced Butte and Tahama County in California, just north of Sacramento. In mid-May, they were doing a job for an elderly couple in Los Molinos. Lorreen Severs was 88 and her husband Homer was 91 at the time. Blinston scouted out the couple as they worked and realized how vulnerable they were. The night before the murder, cell phone tracking showed that Blinston returned to their home again, perhaps to see their routine. Then, around 7.45 a.m. on May 23rd, he came back. This time, he did not simply watch the elderly couple. Blinston broke into the home and attacked Loreen and Homer. Loreen died from a stab wound to the upper torso, and both had had their throats slashed. Thankfully, Homer survived the attack and was rushed to a hospital in a helicopter. Once Blinstead had crossed the line into murder, he seems to have been unleashed internally as he was soon out to kill again. On June 4th, the creature was working another tree trimming job, this time for Sandra George, who was 82 years old and likely never suspected the evil that was in her midst. The drug-addled monster waited until the job was done and the rest of the crew had left, then returned to the home. He broke in and attacked the elderly woman, slashing her throat and leaving her dead in the home. She was discovered the next afternoon around 5 p.m. and declared dead at the scene. The final murder took place only two days after the George killing. This time, the victim was an acquaintance of Blinston rather than a customer. 56-year-old Vicki Klein was last seen with the monster in downtown Oroville on June 6, 2020. Later that day, he doused her car in gasoline and lit it on fire. When it was discovered, police searched it for DNA and fingerprint evidence. Klein's body was not discovered until three weeks later on June 21st, a week after the creature had been arrested. She too had had her throat slashed and then was dumped in a river an hour away from Oroville in the town called Belden. Police were able to connect Blinston to the burned car, and before Klein's body was found, police wanted him for questioning. They learned that he had been camping out on a property in the town of Brush Creek, and SWAT was sent to arrest him. When they arrived, they discovered yet another crime in progress. Blinston was outside a mobile home with a hatchet, trying to break in. When he saw police, he ran, but was soon captured after being pepper sprayed and tased. Inside the trailer, they found a wounded man who had had his throat slashed. He told police that he had let the killer move into the trailer for the night after Blinston complained of bears on the property. He woke up to find the creature standing over him. Blinston had stabbed him in the throat, yet the man was able to fight him off and force him out of the mobile home. Now in custody, police were able to connect Blinston to the killings that they had been working to solve in the area. He was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Two years later, in May of 2022, the trial began. The prosecution called dozens of witnesses and had hundreds of pieces of evidence, including photos, cell phone tracking data, and business records that all pointed to Blinston as the killer. On August 4th, he was found guilty on all charges and given three life sentences without the possibility of parole. Ryan Scott Blinston is currently housed at the Pleasant Valley State Prison in Coalinga. So breaking today, a serial killer will spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ryan Blinston of Oroville worked as a tree trimmer at the home of several of his victims before returning to attack those victims. In May 2020, Blinston murdered Lorene Sievers of Los Molinas and also tried to kill her husband Homer. He died soon after. Then in June 2020, uh, Blinston killed another customer. This is Sandra George in Oroville. And 
also in June, his acquaintance, Vicki Klein. Now, a SWAT team arrested him soon after in Brush Creek. Action News Now reporter Ryan Ketchum shows us the emotional scene today following today's sentencing. Every morning when I wake up, I have to look in the mirror, and he left 18 staples in my neck. Robert Allen Smith spoke in front of the courtroom today. A SWAT team saved his life two years ago. Coincidentally, coming just in time as convicted killer Ryan Blinston was attacking him. He survived with a neck wound. My hospital and doctor bills are upward into the six digits, over $159,000 that I'm now responsible for. He was left with more than just physical pain. Emotionally and psychologically, the night terrors, the PTSD, the trauma. Smith says he's been waiting for this day for a long time. You know, it's, it's a fact of closure. And um, now I can, you know, live my life and do what I want to do. And um, it's, it's a relief off my shoulders. There's so much weight taken off my shoulders that I don't have to worry about this anymore. The courtroom was filled with friends and family of the victims today. District Attorney Mike Ramsey tells me that this is also a victory for the community and shows that law enforcement will make sure that evil is taken from the streets. Reporting in Orville, I'm Ryan Ketchum. Action News Now, coverage you can count on. DA Mike Ramsey also tells Action News Now, Blinston never gave a reason as to why he killed these people. We'll hear from more family members and loved ones coming up at 6. This man not only took multiple lives, he's also taken mine, if not all of our livelihood. Breaking today, a convicted serial killer will be spending the rest of his life in prison. Ryan Blinston worked as a tree trimmer at several of his victims' homes. Victims' family members were in court today for the serial killer sentencing. And Action News Now reporter Ryan Ketchum spoke with them about how they feel knowing the murderer will be locked up for life. It feels good for it to be over, and I'm glad to know that he's never going to walk outside again a day in his life. Shandella Clark and other family members of Ryan Blinston's victims spoke in the courtroom today, sharing their struggles since the murders. This man not only took multiple lives, he's also taken mine, if not all of our livelihood. He made me realize that evil and monsters actually do exist. What used to be a carefree life has been replaced with constantly looking over my shoulder. It's a horrible way to live. District Attorney Mike Ramsey says Ryan Blinston, here in the yellow shirt, was a tree trimmer from Oroville. In 2020, he killed three people. A SWAT team arrested him as he was attacking Robert Allen Smith in Brush Creek. Smith survived the attack and says it still haunts him. I have to wake up every morning and look in the mirror and see the scar on my neck from the wound inflicted, reminding me of that horrific night. In a sense, it's a life sentence for me. Ramsey says it was important to sentence Blinston and make sure that he can't get back out on the street. Particularly, you look into uh, Mr. Blinston's eyes and you see true evil you see dead eyes and this is a person that you do not want running around in a free society the jury found blinston guilty of murdering three people and attempting to murder two others ramsey says blinston has still not given a reason as to why he killed and attempted to kill these people reporting in orville i'm ryan ketchum action news now coverage you can count on the district attorney says Blinston went after more vulnerable people. He killed two people over 80 years old and attacked another. The other two victims were over 50. She was the life of the party. Remembering one of her last nights out with mom, Vicki Klein. But if you look at the video, she had fun. <laughs> Shandella she Clark is a daughter in mourning. She's not just gone, she was stolen from us. Prosecutors say by this man, Ryan Blinston, who is already in jail for an attempted murder and charged Thursday with murdering three others in Northern California towns by slashing their throats, including Vicki Klein. It's just my mom must have been terrified, you know, she just she must have been so scared. On June 6th, 
Vicky's car was destroyed in a fire. Investigators say it was arson. Shandella and her sister reported their mom missing and searched homes in the area. Ryan Blinston comes walking out of the house with his eyebrows singed off and his hand wrapped. Shandella says they chased him through Oroville, but he got away. We're calling the cops and this is the guy and this is his license plate number. And in rural Brush Creek, police say they arrested Blinston days later in the midst of another attempted murder. I think that he thought that my mom wouldn't be missed, that he could get away with it like he had been. And that's where he made his mistake because we made sure she was missed. And though Shandella believes she helped bring her mother's killer to justice. She was the light in a lot of our lives. Vicki Klein is missed.